Hello and welcome to this episode of Shim on Ops. Today we're going to talk about database observability. And together with me, I have Roy Krieger from Metis Data, where we're going to explore how to make sure that our database migrations and that everything actually works as we want. Let's get started. Hey, Rui, how are you? Hey, Shimon, how are you? Nice to meet you again. It's great, it's great to be here with you. And thank you very much for coming on the show. Today's episode is especially interesting. I got to tell you, unfortunately, the most production outages that I had were mainly caused because of database issues and database <laughs> migrations. And this is always, you know, the problem, like the thing that catches you, you know, in the ass. It's, it's, it's always the problem. So please introduce yourself. Yeah, so uh, happy to. So my name is Rui. Uh, I'm from Israel. A uh, little bit about my background. I spent uh, around seven years uh, in one of the intelligence uh, units in uh, in Israel. Uh, was a developer, architect, and, and other positions as well. And then spent uh, a few years in the Israeli ecosystem. Like most of the entrepreneurs, I was like at a company called Trustier, which was a cybersecurity, got acquired by IBM, a very big acquisition back in the day. Uh, I was head of product at uh, Red Band, which was like different domain, uh, automotive, helping OEMs and car manufacturers to uh, remotely uh, update software uh, when Autotech was a thing. Uh, maybe it's still a thing. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah, now I'm uh, the CEO, founder of Medis, helping developers, companies, DevOps, like with their databases. Uh, yeah. So, so tell me, what brought you to this problem and how would you define the problem? Because, you know, the database space is huge and I think it's like one of the most ancient, you know, things in, in software development, you know, like uh, databases existed for, I don't know, 60 years. So what brought yeah. you to it? Yes. Yeah, so like when me and my co-founder, which is like his background is uh, very deep in databases and his entire career was, uh, was spent around databases. Uh, when we looked around, we saw like, yeah, databases are so ancient, uh, at least like SQLs. And then you had like the wave of known SQL and you have Redis and you have graph databases, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we saw that like moving to the cloud and all the shift left uh, movement, right? Basically made developers uh, or uh, forced developers to own things they didn't own before, right? So you have, and you probably know it from the tree, uh, you have like tons of tooling around like Kubernetes, how to make developers expert in Kubernetes and so forth uh, with like security. You have snakes and, and all those tools around security, making developers basically own the security uh, DevSecOps movement. Uh, but we saw that basically now developers becoming owners of the database. They are responsible for writing the code or the SQL or whatever uh, language they use. They're responsible for troubleshooting, making sure it's all aligned. And we saw that there is no such tool or not a very good tooling with great developer experience, basically allowing developers to master the entire stack. Bear in mind that in today's world, cloud native application and whatnot, with a click of a button, you can spin whatever database you have. So even with a company like ours, which is a seed stage company, you have a DynamoDB or a MongoDB and you have Redis and you have SQL. And I'm still from the days where like deciding on a database was a strategic decision, right? Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, basically we really want to help developers and companies uh, uh, own, control, maintain, troubleshoot, you name it, like making sure they have confidence with their data layer. Yeah, uh, yeah and that's basically our mission, our North so, Star. Like, from what I see, like you're saying, listen, databases existed forever. But now, number one, the responsibility has shifted towards like engineering teams instead mm -hmm. of like those DBA organizations owning them. And number two, the velocity of change. There are constantly changes, continuous deployment, continuous delivery. And there are many, many changes that are happening all the time. So you can't actually sit with the DBA all day long planning like your migration. It's in line together. Yeah. 
it's not only that. Think about it like the movement to multi-tenancy architecture. So you can find like companies which have like thousands of databases that like uh, 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 service different customers like with the same product. You can find like we have customers that like uh, uh, have on-premise part of their like uh, deployments are on-premise. How are you making sure that everything is aligned, monitor, troubleshoot, and not just graphs, but really something developer can work with and not just, oh, I have an outage, I have a CPU. Why did you have it? And the third, third thing that basically you can think about it, feature flag. So your production works mm -hmm. amazingly. And then you're doing like a feature flag and like suddenly your database is gone rogue or outage or whatever. Why is it happen? What is the context? Like what happens suddenly? Nothing changed in the code, but still your database like uh, uh, has suddenly trouble working as expected. So basically the entire change uh, mechanism in your production environment and company as it grows, like the way their customers are using the database is evolving mm -hmm. continuously. Uh, you need to have the ability to react uh, quickly and rapidly to uh, customer experience, which is basically the most important thing. Yeah, I, I totally relate to that. So, so maybe let, let's talk about the the landscape. So, you know, my company we have like DynamoDB, we have RDS Aurora, we have like so many different things. So, so how does the landscape look today? Because I think there's like the the cloud vendors which can help you monitor your databases. There's some other solutions. So, how do you see the landscape today? So like uh, even when we started raising our uh, seed round, like the way we saw the landscape and I think like with the movement of moving to the cloud and like rapidly adopting cloud, most of the DevOps platform when they're starting, I don't want to say starting a new category, but like building a novel idea, I think that it all starts with, okay, um, which are the comp the competitors and like when we saw it you had all this new relic datadog and observability platforms which are awesome in terms of like application but in terms of the the way they monitor the database it's like taking something from the old school on-premise databases and just bringing it to the cloud like you don't care about cp you do care about cpu io and query per second but you don't really care it doesn't help you solve problems making sure your database can scale and whatnot um, so those solution existed and like we saw like few startups, mainly when we spoke with big companies, fortune 100, fortune 500 companies, they all tried to build some, uh, internal tooling around that. They all, they all had the problems. They all tried to solve it in some way, but we didn't see like one tool that can really like, uh, compete with our vision. We had like few things scattered around this solve this one uh, the observability giving you some kind of a monitoring yeah. service but not like a dev first approach ci cd rapid development so yeah we saw them as a competitor yeah you have to convince companies like to adopt a tool like you as well but uh, still we think the differentiation is still very uh, uh meaningful yeah. Okay. So I think in your case, let's just see it because, you know, it's it's kind of hard when it's a developer first tool. I think it's really important to see it. So let me bring up your your screen and tell me what's yeah. unique about Metis' solution. Great. So basically, uh, one second, I'll try to find my cursor. Ah, oh, I see it here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so what you see here is like we created like for this specific uh, uh, talk, a, a demo, where basically you can go, you can think about it, how you're going from the left to the right. So basically you have here a pull request when like we can show later on how it's integrating with your Git flow, uh, GitHub actions and your CI CD. Uh, and you see here uh, a developer, basically the way you integrate Matis is by doing two simple things. One, we are based on open telemetry. You're doing like, Hmm. npm install pip install uh in your application server in this specific scenario it, it, we are seeing uh, a node.js application uh, built on top of node.js but we support like many languages as well but we are open telemetry based 
And like once you did that, you do, you put like a small Docker container container in your production environment, which can help you like do all the observability uh, part of our solution. And I'll explain a little, little oh, bit it's more. It's installed. It. it is installed. It, it, it is, is installed. And what you see here, a developer committed a pull request. When committing a pull request, basically Metis observe whatever like interaction within there is end-to-end -end testing or integration test uh, that he did during the pull request. And basically this is what Metis shows you. Metis uh, recognized like all the REST APIs in, uh, sorry, uh, interacted with the database. And for example, you can see here, uh, you have like uh, a, a, an API that in turn uh, invoked uh, and a SQL query, you can see oh, here the same nice. query itself. You can see the REST API, the trace, and the span. And for uh -huh. each query, for example, you can see exactly like uh, what are the problems and what are the solutions that Metis already uh, uh, so, so hold on. So, so you hook onto my application and you extract the, t the communication with the uh, database, and then you like reverse engineer understanding what is going to happen. Not only that, I am going to tell you approximately how it's going to be uh, performing the production because what we are doing, we're taking all the statistics from the production environment, all like you remember the little Docker container that I told you yeah. about, and we are enriching the SQL. Usually your dev environment or your staging environment is uh, very like everything works well on your staging environment. You, <laughs> had, like, you have like 1,000 rows and that's it. But like Metis enriches every, everything and tell you what is the problem and what is the impact and what is the remediation plan. For example, here you can see uh, you didn't use limit. Uh, you can go on top of the query and for each access method, look on top of the query itself. What is the problem? So, so basically, you hook on top of my database on the one hand to see all of the different transactions that happen. You look at my code on the other hand, and then you're going to see how the change is going to affect my database. And not only you discover possible issues, you also provide recommendations on how to remediate them. Yeah, most of the recommendation, by the way, is like uh, flat out, like just copy paste. Like you see, for example, here we detected like uh, a table scan and the amount of rows that are going to be read in the production is about like 25 million rows on one table. So just add an index met is already created the right index we are testing all those indexes before making sure it really uh, does uh, perform uh, improve your production like you probably know that too many indexes is not good as well uh and like just copy it put it in your code and you're done this uh, can also reduce costs because it's going to cost me less it's going to consume less resources we have like we call it like query per uh, dollar, right? <laughs> so <laughs> we have like companies that reduce like be between 20 to 30% with their load and their ability to scale down uh, their, uh, yeah, their nice. uh, cores and uh, CPUs with their RDS and whatnot. Uh, yeah, so we cover tons of things. Uh, and as you go right, you can basically become an expert mode like see all the observability, look at all the metrics, uh, how the execution plan, if you want to analyze it with like your tooling or whatever, just with API, uh, you can look at it. But basically, yeah, this is in terms of like uh, alignment. Pure analysis. Pure analysis. But the one thing also we are covering, covering is the schema migration. We are oh. <laughs> yeah. the, one that <laughs> the one that caused me a lot of outages. Yeah, so think of a developer that does uh, a drop table or drop column or thing of those nature. But Metis can not only like detect it, we are analyzing it and showing you how long will like the table going to be locked. Uh, if you have 1,000 databases, we talked about our customer with 1,000 databases. So now he's updating his schema. You won't maybe get an outage, but you are going to be locked for four hours. Do you want to know that, right? Mm -hmm. So Metis can show you like approximately how long does it take. Do you have index? Are you dropping an index? Are you uh, dropping a uh, table cascade? Uh, and also, what is the insight? What is the impact? And what is the remediation? But we want to make sure if you are a team leader or a senior developer, even if you're a junior developer, the last thing you want is to uh, do a, a data loss or like lock your database for your uh, customers. 
Uh, and we want to protect developers that are not expert within database domain. And the ones that are, uh, we just want to help them like make sure like that their hypothesis and the way they see it just makes sense. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, yeah. so this is the part. Tool? Yeah, I want to just like walk you through quickly about what we saw here. What we call it is the observability dashboard. On top of like the prevention, the way we see the world is that you need to have observability uh, that, uh, uh, aspect on your database, not just like monitoring. So, for example, here Metis can analyze everything from like how, show you how the tables are growing analyze all the tables and making sure like that your tables is aligned and giving you alerts or not to fix it before something happened. We can show you about statistics of your query and how to fix it, like how your query uh, uh, evolve over time. And we are analyzing on top of the production environment and showing you. Same thing with indexes. Like here you have index not being used for 14 days. You should like drop it because it's tampering with your optimizer. Uh, basically, configuration. Do you have auto vacuum? Do you have tons of other? I don't want to go too uh, deep. Uh, are your statistics up to date? Basically, you want to make sure, like a holy grail, that you shouldn't look at this graph that I'm showing you and those uh, uh, yeah. dashboards. Just get alert with your uh, Slack. This is the problem in your database. This is why is it the problem, and this is the solution you, know, you want to go and then click and go into Metis uh, platform. But so basically, I'll tell you, it's it, like when I look at it, like so it is great, like database observability part, but like some of the things they exist on so like RDS or whatever or GCP. But the unique thing that I identify here is that you look from the PR level and you, you integrate together with the development journey because just looking at stats that are unrelated to anything, it's, it's almost pointless. And, and like every database that is out there provides you, I'd call it dry statistics, but they are not related to your code. So it will be very interesting for me to see how does it integrate together with the code itself. Yeah, sure. So I'll uh, open my VS Code, for example. So, like, uh, to your point, uh, what you see here is basically uh, in this scenario, we talked about the Node.js application, and here mm -hmm. we're using SQLize, which is an ORM. Yep. So, one of the problems with ORM, everybody knows when you scale up, like... Unoptimized. Uh, 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 unoptimized, it's to say the least, like, literally, <laughs> your database. Like, optimized means, like, okay, it works. But no, it's, it, stopped, it's, it stopped working at some point. But what you see here basically is like the model and the entities, uh, but you don't see any SQL, right? So you are a developer, you don't know what is like, even if you're going to see to Datadog and see like the SQL with the execution plan, you don't know how to relate it to the code itself. Like you never mm -hmm. saw this uh, specific SQL. So for example, in this uh, 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 scenario, I wanna do a, like an end-to-end um, uh, -end testing. So I'll do quickly like uh, git checkout. Minus B, we'll call it Shim on Ops. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, great. Uh, and now uh, let's just uh, do like git add. Oh, fit add. All right. Uh, uh, that's it. So what is the change that we're making? So now we're not changing. Think about a developer who wrote the code and just want to make sure, like, uh, before he commits the code, what Mattis has to say about his okay. data aspect of the code. Okay, so he's doing an end-to-end -end testing. He's doing his git push. One second, and uh, yep, yep, upstream created, 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 and okay, we're Ooh. done. Let's go to uh, eh, pull request. Oh, I created a, a repo. That's nice. We came prepared. Yeah. So if we're doing it, okay, now what you're going to see is basically all the end-to-end -end testing uh, that we already implemented inside this specific project. Okay. Uh, 
hope everyone uh, that is writing a code and listen to the this show writes an end-to-end -end testing and basically on top of the end-to-end -end testing you don't have to put anything more in terms of what Metis needs. Metis will look at the end-to-end -end testing and just tell you, comment to you here. You see it comments yeah. directly inside the GitHub. Uh, let's wait a second. Okay, everything's there. And now you can just click it and see, hey, do I have like here? You see here like we wrote on top of the IMDB uh, 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 database and you, bam, you see here you have an SQL We'll write, we'll take like 1.3 million rows. What is the problems? What is the solution that Mary Metis uh, provided? You see, this is like the first iteration. Okay, and then you as a developer say, ah, you know what? Maybe I need to add this specific index. So I'll copy that. Just go to the repo uh, here, add uh, create index. Sorry. This is so nice because for every pull request, you can see the impact of it. And, you know, oh, yeah. usually today, like with SQL, you don't look at it this way. This is so interesting. Yeah. And now we're going to do the same thing uh, as before. Get che uh, check out Shimon Oxstein. We'll create okay. a new account. Uh, we'll do... Uh, uh, you want to add the file, I guess, the create index. Add. No, I already created, uh, yeah. added the file. Added to git, yeah. Add, uh, git, git commit. So now Metis is going to tell me, okay, what's going to happen when I add the index, okay? Yeah, exactly. Uh, git push. Nice. Okay. Okay. So and this way, like when I write code and when I open up a pull request, I can also see the impact of it on my database. Exactly. You can see what is going to happen once you are going to deploy those changes, those new code. Uh, and bear in mind, even if you have a query that was great like a month ago, right? Uh, and now like something has changed in terms of the way your user interact with your application. Metis yeah. will inform you all, on all your already existing queries. What are the problem? What are the problems? Like and what are the supported databases that you have? So currently, we're support like. Uh, of course, we started like with the SQL because, like, in terms of like how we saw the market, and that's different conversation. Like Postgres. Maybe SQL, like Postgres, MySQL, MSSQL. Yeah, so we support now Postgres and MySQL. Okay, mm -hmm. and like uh, we are now expanding to uh, MongoDB. Hopefully. Uh, and like we're debating what's the next. Uh, oh, Postgres and MySQL is already you know ninety percent of a general work. Yeah, it's a, that's a different conversation. Okay, <laughs> we saw it here and oh. highest rates uh, movies uh, didn't Let's work. Maybe. <laughs> One second. Did we add the file? I don't remember. I don't see it here. Could Maybe we forgot to call it dot .sql. Uh, ta, ta, ta. But but I think it's clear, Roy. I think it's it's definitely okay. clear that like on uh, every code change that you create, like it's run. Yeah, uh, yeah. It happened even to uh, Steve Jobs. Uh, yeah, about. different conversation. Like how Postgres is eating the world. Like we're seeing all over the place uh, uh, Postgres. So that's why we started yeah. with that. Probably we're going to go with MongoDB and DynamoDB later on. Cool. So tell me, how much does it cost? Oh, so basically the way we look at it, like we, as you know, uh, we're a big fan of PLG. So basically we have like a very generous free tier. So every developer, we want like small teams uh, with like small activity in the database to enjoy it for free and like help. Uh, like for us to help them scale. And then we basically usage based uh, 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 pricing, then it depends based on, on what? The amount, based on the amount, the amount of, of queries you have in your database, the amount of database mm -hmm. you have and the amount of queries inside your database. But like it goes on the millions, like for 10 million queries, for like 20 million queries, something like that. Bear in mind, we are analyzing 
basically every query in your production environment and showing you is it good, not good, why is it not good, and how to fix it. Amazing. So for someone who wants to get started, how does it get started? So he goes into our website, metisdata.io. Uh, he's doing like reading the documentation. He can reach us through like the Discord channel that we have. Basically, if anyone has like any database question besides the point of Metis, we are like really uh, uh, want to create a community around that. Not just saying that like we are hoping with like many companies just helping them solve problems without like uh, being a customer of Metis. Uh, so if you have any database related question, just hop in and like uh, you can get in touch uh, me, with me directly uh, through the Discord. You can go to our website, uh, just sign up and get start started. You can get started right away. Amazing. And if cool. not, call me and tell me that the documentation is not clear enough. Uh, I appreciate the feedback. No, I I think every developer first company has to be self service. You know, like there is no other way. Like cool. we uh, we totally agree. So, yeah. Not Amazing. Only the- Thank you very very much for coming. It was very very interesting was, and good luck. Pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank. You. Have a great day. Yeah.